title of this presentation is Uses of Prisms in Ophthalmology. Here are some of the uses. I'm going to discuss it one by one. I'm going to start by the first, which is replacing mirrors on some of the instruments. Using right angle prism, when placed in a suitable way, it, we can change the direction of rays 90 or 180 degrees. Hence, prism can replace mirrors in some of the instruments. In Zeiss slit lamp, using a prism, light emitted from a lamp is reflected 90 degrees into the patient's eye. The reflecting surface of the prism does have 100% reflectance, and since it is enclosed in glass, it cannot become dirty. On the other hand, mirrors are fragile and are more susceptible to the position of debris. Prisms are used as shown in the diaphragm. This will reduce the effective interpupillary distance from 60 millimeters to 15. This allows the source of light and the two lines of sight of both eyes to get access into the patient through the patient's pupil, and this allows binocular vision. Goldman Applanation Tonometry. In Goldman Applanation Tonometry, two prisms are located in the tip of the cone. They are arranged in such a way that one of the prisms will shift the image in one direction and the other in the opposite direction. So we have two prisms based out opposite each other. If you are seeing a circle, one half of the circle will be shifted to the apex of this prism and the other half of the circle will be shifted in the opposite direction. The total amount of shift is 3.06 millimeter. Fluorescein stain is applied to distinguish the tear film from the cornea. When the cone touches the cornea, the area of touch will be devoid of fluorescein stain tears, so it will appear black. When this area is seen through the tip of the applanation, the two prisms are going to shift each half of the circle into opposite direction. In this diagram, the white line is a section of the cornea, the green line is the tear film stained with fluorescein. The black zone is the area devoid of tears. In the middle diagram here, this is the proper applanation. It has a diameter of 3.06 millimeter. This is smaller and this is larger than should be. When the observer looks through the applanation cone, as the two prisms will shift each half of the circle into opposite direction, so that the total shift in all the cases is 3.06 millimeters. Observer will notice the appearance of two semicircles. The middle one is the proper end point where the two semicircles are touching from inside. This one is too low, this one is too high. Accordingly, the operator will start to rotate this dial when we change this 
I'm going to either push the applanation tip in or away from the cornea. So in this case, we want to push it more in. And in this case, we want to push it to the outside till we achieve this appearance. Once this appearance, we got it, we, we can have the reading here. And this is the IOP of the patient. To measure angle of squint, a prism can be used together with corneal light reflex test. Prisms of increasing power are applied in front of the deviated eye till the light reflex is shifted and becomes on the center of the pupil. Or we can apply the prism of increasing power in front of the fixing eye. In this diagram, this is the affected eye and this is the normal eye. So in this case, we apply the prisms with the base pointed toward the affected eye and we increase the power till the corneal light reflex is central. And the prism will cause shift of the image. The patient has to move his normal eye to keep seeing the same object. And this will force him to move the affected eye. So gradually we deviate this eye more till the squinting eye becomes centralized. So we can do the same test like before or by applying the prism in front of the sound eye. This method is better because it is easier to see the reflex on this central of the cornea becoming centralized. Here we are examining through the prism waiting for centralization, but here we are examining waiting for centralization without the prism, so it's easier to notice. Again, prisms can be used either base uh, horizontal or vertical, depending on the direction of squint, can be used together with the cover test. We repeat the cover test, change the power of the prism till there is no movement, then we can know exactly the amount of latent squint. Again, in the management of latent squint, we can use prisms either as a training prism or a reliefing prism. This patient got a latent conversion squint. If we apply a base in prism, image will be shifted outwards and the patient has to do more effort to shift his eye outward to see the image. So this will be more training for the lateral rectus. So we are going to improve the situation. So this is a training prism. Same situation, we can apply prism, but base out. In this case, the image will be shifted in the direction the the eye wants to go. So this is a reliefing for the patient. What's against this method is that by time the muscles will be abnormal more and more and squint will change from latent into manifest squint. Lastly, we can use prisms for, to measure the relative conversions. Prisms can be used with the eye fixing one point, both eyes are open fixing one point. Then we gradually add prisms to increase of increasing power in front of one of the eyes. Image will be shifted toward the apex of the prism and the patient will do more and more conversions to keep a single binocular vision. The strongest base out prism through which binocular vision is maintained is the measurement of the 
positive part of conversions. The average amplitude of conversions is 10.5 meter angles. Positive part is 9.5 and negative part is 1. To measure the positive part, we can use a base out prism of increasing power and to measure the negative part, we can use a base in prism. Thank you for your attention.